the original cylinder arm machine before you know long long time ago was the Singer 153W103, and I found this machine about a couple of years ago on uh, Facebook Marketplace. I bought it from a poultry shop, and it is a just a workhorse. It's a great machine. In fact, when you find these, you're often going to find that they have been worked to death. So expect that you might have repair to do or replacement parts. Here I am sewing some leather. And it's just chugging along. If you have an opportunity to test the machine before you buy it, you want to look for is the stitch consistent? Is it a nice regular stitch, top stitch, and on the bottom is a nice regular line as well. And if the lock stitch is fitting inside, you know, if the tension is correct. Tension is adjustable in these machines, but you, you want to see, you know, what's going on with the machine. Also, these don't come with reverse. There's a couple ways of doing a back stitch. One way is to just turn the material around, but another way, often, especially if you're working with bags or gussets, is to lift up the presser foot, pull the material back a little bit, so that the needle will drop down into the first two holes behind it. And then you conduct, you, then you execute your back stitch that way. That works really well for bags and uh, you know, gussets on bags, because you can't easily turn the material around through the, the harp in the machine. This is a test that people love to see, which is how much leather can it sew? You know, the singer, Daniel says, this is medium to light grade leather. So I started off with four ounces of leather and I'm building a four to five ounce piece of veg camp. And I'm just layering them up and building and building and building. And you can see the walking foot motion gradually climbing these uh, leather straps. I get near the end of uh, this, the, it is struggling a little bit, but you know, that's to be expected because at this point it's going through approximately uh, five to six straps there of veg tan leather. It's a little bit hard to see, but when using this um, leather gauge, I started off around four to five ounces at the very front of it. And then I'm ending up with almost 24 ounces of leather at the very back. Is that lightweight to medium? Who knows? I don't think so. I mean, this would be a great machine for tack, chaps, all kinds of things. And um, it's it's very um, versatile machine. You can see the back stitch, it's very consistent. A couple things. So these machines are gonna be worn and used quite a bit. They were made as early, I think, around uh, World War One, and made up until probably about the 1970s, maybe late 60s. On my particular machine, the feed dock is nearly gone. I mean, it's just, toast. It's not even there anymore. It's just a knob that has a hole in it. And I've been having a lot of problems with material, especially gussets of bags, staying on there. So that's a part that I'm going to have to replace. Another thing to take a look at is the hook. Take the bobbin out of the bobbin case and examine the hook if you can. Bring a, um, you know, a magnifying glass or some kind of magnifying eyeglasses to look at the hook to see if there's been any strikes. Normally there shouldn't because these machines do have a safety clutch 
that will prevent the, the needle from striking the hook. But you never know, and you want to take a look. Again, everything's manual on this machine, including the stitch regulation. So here are the instructions I have that came with the machine. It's printed to the top and glued down. And thank God, because every single time I change the stitch length, I have to go look at these instructions. And also you want to look at the timing belt. Is it a newer timing belt or is it an older cloth clog timing belt? The newer ones are the neoprene timing belts, and that's great because that's not going to break and that's going to hold uh, last and you won't have that kind of repair. The International Sewing Machine Collection Society is a great resource to look into. It, it has a website. And if you go under, um, you know, comprehensive singer model list, you'll get a list of all the different types of industrial sewing machines, which is great to look at and look machines up, especially if you're shopping quite a bit on eBay or Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace. You'll get to this list and it'll have classes machines by each kind of uh, categorized by 100 class, you know, one through 90, class 100 through 199 and 200 through 299. And you can go to the next page here and, it, and there's a lot of information on this website that's very useful and helpful. And then when you dive deeper into a class of machine and you look up finally the number, it'll tell you exactly, you know, what was it made for? It often gives a needle size, 135 by seven here. And it will go into some details about the, what the machine was made for. And that's kind of important because sometimes, you know, machines were made for very, very specific functions. And just because somebody says it sews leather, I wouldn't always trust that. You really need to look into it. Another step is to actually look up the manual. And here I have the manual I pulled down from the internet. You can see there were actually four different machines made with this. And you can kind of get an idea of what are the settings? What's to be expected? Uh, what kind of maintenance is uh, required on these machines? And this, these manuals are sometimes hard to read because the language is a little bit dated and it seems to be very industrialized language that's uh, difficult to uh, follow, but still very important information. It tells right here, you know, the 153 W103 is like the 101 and, you know, it gives a little bit more information about the feed motion. And this stuff is super, super important, um, especially if you're going to end up buying this machine and having it in your shop and using it. Because frankly, there's not a lot of industrial sewing machine technicians left in the United States. NAFTA, which you know was the North, North American Free Trade Agreement, and all the other free trade agreements have really sent overseas a lot of the manufacturing, especially a garment manufacturing. So, you know, the industrial sewing machine sales in the United States fell. The number of technicians out there are not as many as, definitely not as many as 30 years ago. So if you buy this machine, you may need to really kind of study up and understand and make a commitment to, you know, what, what you're getting. Because, you know, frankly... The used machines can be really good economically. Um, you know, you could pay anywhere from 300 low to up to $1,000 for a machine like this. If it's in pristine condition with a brand new hook and um, everything is done on it, maybe maybe somebody would expect to pay $1,500 you know, $1, for it. But generally they're gonna be around 1,000 or below. And again, this is why you wanna look at the hook. Uh, because the hook is really super important. If the hook is moving a lot, if it's jiggling a lot, you're going to have to replace that hook. And this is going to show up on the on the uh, thread on the under stitch. You'll have this really super irregular under stitch, which happened to me on one of my machines. I couldn't figure out what was going on. And sure enough, the hook needed to be replaced. Again, this manual is really nice to have and super important if you're going to have a 153W103 
which is a really nice original cylinder arm, and it could save you thousands of dollars. I also like to go onto Google and just look at all the other pictures and models out there to see, you know, did they come in black? It's, most of these are in gray. The Battleship Gray tends to be the type of machine that was probably manufactured after World War II. And, you know, just see the, the different kinds of options and, you know, the pieces and what people have been posting about um, for, you know, to get an idea to what to expect and what else is out there with this kind of machine. These resources are, you know, helps you understand and make a better decision uh, because, frankly, used sewing machines is a buyer beware world. It's just like used cars, used boats used appliances, anything else. Another resource is sewing parts online. You go in, you type in Singer 153 W103 and see what parts come up. Super easy to do, really quick. First thing, timing belt. Guess what? The timing belt's available and it's about, I don't know, 28 bucks or so. Um, and it tells you all the different types of machines this timing belt will work on and these other numbers of machines, like the Conso specifically, many times the Conso parts are interchangeable with the Singer parts because the Conso is just a, basically a duplicate of Singer machines. So sewing parts online is a great resource. You can buy feet here. You can buy extra uh, adaptations, check springs, um, the, the uh, tension thing. Uh, bobbin case, all of these parts may need to be replaced on your machine. You never know until you go out and see what you've got, whether it be, you know, in somebody's shop or in a barn or wherever. Um, if you're looking to purchase a machine like this, these kind of resources kind of help you get an idea of, you know, is it supportable? Are you going to be able to actually uh, restore what you're buying if it needs some parts? And most of the time, Frankly, it will, because again, this machine was so popular and it's such a great machine to use. It they will sew it into the ground. Some some of these shops, I worked in factories where literally they would sew until this machine would melt into the concrete if they could, because they under under uh, constraints, production quotas, and they need to make money. And so that's especially where these machines came from. They came from shops. Sometimes it's upholstery shops, but many times it may be a major factory that was supporting the military. I also like to go on just a Google search to see rotary hook. I didn't see a hook on sewing parts online. See, can I purchase hook and from who? And I just do a basic little search here. And, you know, sure enough, there's at least one major hit here on this page for a hook. So we'll go back up and take a look at that and see who's selling a hook and for how much. And here's a rotary hook. These things wear out. So even with a safety clutch, this is going to wear out. This is where the major motion of the machine is at. It's where all the action happens. And so don't be surprised and don't be shocked if this is the part that breaks first on your machine. Another thing is just go out to eBay. See what's on eBay. Who's selling parts? Or is anyone selling a machine? What's the price for that machine? Uh, where is it at? You know, with shipping today, hey, um, closer is better. And it's going to be cheaper, you know, because if you have to ship something halfway across the world, shipping rates are really super expensive. So you don't want to get into that. But eBay gives you a good idea of, hey, what are the supportable things that you could easily purchase, you know, from bobbins to needle plates to various different parts that you may need, uh, depending upon what kind of sewing you're doing or what you're doing in your shop, be it leather craft, which is what I do, uh, making leather bags or belts, or if you're doing tarps and tents, or if you're doing upholstery work in an upholstery shop for cars. And there's a tension unit down here. There's check springs. Check springs often go out. There's a whole new tension replacement unit. All of these parts. Now, if I went to eBay and there was no parts or like five parts or one page, it's kind of a warning sign because it tells you that, hey, you're not buying a machine that has a lot of aftermarket support. But with the 153W103, you're going to find a ton of stuff because, again, this was the original cylinder arm machine out there that was used for leather craft. Be it in upholstery shops, leather stores, you name it, 
this was where this machine was at and sold. So how many they sold, I have no idea, but it's a lot. And so there's still a lot out there in the marketplace. So finally, I hope you enjoyed this little talk about the 153W103. It's a great machine. I've enjoyed mine and use it uh, on a regular basis. It does take the little uh, guide. And, um, you know, good luck with shopping and finding one. Because frankly, people don't sell them, they keep them. 